Thank you, Kavita ma'am, for uh, introducing me. I take this opportunity to thank the IDAC team, uh, Rajiv sir, uh, to give this uh, opportunity to uh, talk uh, on a topic uh, in which I have contributed uh, in my own way, which I would be sharing uh, in my slides also. Uh, initially, I was given the topic of uh, evidence-based nutrition therapy in management of diabetes, but I've added this word lifestyle also over here because I feel that when you talk about management of diabetes, only nutrition therapy is not going to help and lifestyle modification is equally uh, vital over here. Uh, I may sound more of a teacher in my uh, presentation because I have many students uh, who are sitting over here and they are listening to me. I would also try that you identify gaps and get motivated to do really some good research, which is again a dream of our Dean Sir, Rajiv Sir, to really enter in some hardcore uh, research areas. So uh, I, I start uh, my presentation uh, seeking the blessings of Lord Ganesha, who in Indian mythology is known as the God of Wisdom, remover of uh, obstacles, and also very closely related to diabetes because of his uh, legendary love for sweets as well as his characteristic uh, uh, pot belly and this would make him maybe the most earliest known diabetic case in history. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, may his blessings always be with us and we lead a very happy and healthy life. So, uh, next. So diabetes is a chronic condition that occurs when the body cannot produce enough insulin or cannot effectively use the insulin it does produce. These days we also hear the term pre-diabetics and it indicates a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes and related complications. Next. Uh, diabetes can be broadly classified as type 1 type 2 and gestational diabetes. I'm not going into the exact definitions, but the good part about type 2 diabetes is that it can be prevented or delayed, and there is accumulating evidence now that remission of this uh, condition may sometimes be possible, and I will be uh, showing some evidence in my coming slides as well. Uh, next slide. So. Uh, the screening and the diagnostic tests, they include the measurement of the A1C levels, the fasting plasma glucose and the 2-hour plasma glucose during the 75 grams uh, OGTT test. And again, yes, these are given uh, by the American Diabetes Association, the diagnostic and the screening criteria. Next. So why we are uh, talking about uh, diabetes? We know that people living with diabetes, it is increasing exponentially day to day. And if you see at the latest report of I IDF uh, uh, Diabetes Atlas, their 10th edition, uh, they have done the projections of the rise in the numbers from year 2021 to 2045, and it is going to almost uh, a range uh, range between 13% uh, in uh, Europe to about 134% in Africa. And it is very disheartening, next slide, it is very disheartening to see, uh, next click, that the top three countries uh, having adult population with diabetes, they fall into the Asian continent. And uh, uh, it's, it's a high time that we, we really start thinking. We are thinking, we are doing things, but this makes management of uh, diabetes, uh, as well as prevention of diabetes, the core uh, area. Next slide. So when we talk about management, uh, the A, B, C, D, and E of management, they hold the key, where we are going to talk, where we have to have a look at our A1C levels, the blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and the emphasis on lifestyle modification with a focus on diet and the physical activity. So the goals of care or management, they have to, to prevent the complications related to diabetes and also optimizing the quality of life of people who are living with diabetes. And so any management plan which is being designed, it has to be smart enough in terms of specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and of course, time-limited 
because we want to optimize that the diabetic people are living a healthy and a happy life as well. So what are the goals for, for nutrition therapy? Promoting and supporting healthy full eating patterns, emphasizing a variety of nutrient dense foods in appropriate proportion sizes, and this is basically to achieve idle body weight goals, uh, attain uh, our individual glycemic blood pressure, lipid goals, and delaying the complications of diabetes. Very important here is to address the individual nutrient needs. So one diet plan doesn't suit all. We, we have been studying about nutrition therapy. We know about nutrition sciences. So we know this also, that there's a lot of diversity among the food that people eat. So there is no one single plan which is going to suit all and to address individual nutrition needs is very important and this should be done on the basis of the personal cultural preferences. Uh, health literacy is very important, accessibility to these healthy foods and also the willingness and ability to make behavioral changes and I will go one step ahead, adherence to these behavioral changes is equally important. Maintaining the pleasure of eating. There is a lot of stigma attached to a diet where there are a lot of restrictions. And actually people lose the pleasure of eating food. So by providing the right food choices, the right messages pertaining to uh, the meals which should be uh, uh, designed for the diabetic patients, uh, the pleasure of eating should always be retained. Mm, and to provide practical tools for developing healthy eating patterns rather than just focusing on individual nutrients in terms of macronutrients or micronutrients or a single food. You cannot isolate food or a nutrient and just focus on one as a part of the management therapy. So, so the, I have picked up this table from a, a paper which is from the Indian perspective and uh, they have compared the recommendations of nutrition therapy based on the evidence which is available by three of the important working bodies on uh, diabetes which is the RSSDI, the ADA and ICMR and it's a must read for all the students uh, especially. A beautiful paper where the comparison has uh, uh, brought up and Taking this uh, ahead, the paper, the content of the paper ahead, the evidence-based nutrition recommendations which have been laid for the management of diabetes, they include, of course, reducing intake of refined foods, total fat, restricting the intake of uh, the total fat with an emphasis on the calories being contributed by saturated fatty acids, increasing the intake of fiber-rich foods, uh, the protein content, the contribution of calories from proteins as well as the intake of dietary fiber also has to be emphasized, restricting the intake of sucrose and also the non-nutritive sweeteners which are very readily used as substitutes to sugar uh, while uh, many of the diet or menu plans are prescribed. So that needs to be taken care of. Uh, adopting regulating, uh, regulated daily meal plans comprising of low glycemic index carbohydrates. So actually looking at what is the percentage of carbohydrate contribution each, e in each meal is also of equal importance. And portification it can be one of the technique where the cereal floors, they can be portified with either soluble uh, uh, viscous fiber or the legume floor. So this is one of the study that uh, my MSc students had undertaken and here we had tried to attempt that when we say that dietary diversity is there and from all the food groups uh, the meal should be planned, that there should be a contribution, uh, we tried to evaluate uh, the food consumption pattern among the type 2 diabetic subjects and uh, we, we observed that only 30% of the participants, uh, they were following a diet which was either given by a doctor or a dietitian, rest of them felt that they are capable enough of deciding what they can eat, though they were suffering from type 2 diabetes. And when we saw the contribution of various macronutrients, uh, carbohydrates contributed to 76% of the total calories, proteins 11%, and fats to 13%. The comparison with the ICMR uh, recommendations showed that the participants, they were consuming carbohydrates 15 to 20% more and proteins and fats were being consumed about 5 to 7% less as per the recommendation. And 
This emphasizes the need to plan and advocate appropriate diet plans to meet the recommended nutrient requirements for especially the T2DM patients. So there is evidence to show that why a single micronutrient or micronutrient should not be focused, rather it should be a whole diversified approach which should be adopted. So this slide, it shows some of the evidence regarding the nutrition uh, therapy and there is evidence to show that nutrition therapy recommendations do bring a reduction in the A1C values but no idle percentage of micronutrients have been uh, or the micronutrients have been identified and a variety of eating patterns have shown to be effective for persons who are living with diabetes. Similarly, another meta-analysis, we talked about the food groups in the dietary prevention of type 2 diabetes. It showed that there is an inverse association between consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, whole grains, nuts, and the risk of T2DM. Similarly, there are some foods which tend to increase the risk of uh, type 2 diabetes. However, no individual nutrients but a diverse dietary pattern showed to contribute to the healthy lifestyle and also towards the T2DM prevention. And similarly, in one of the recent interesting paper which showed the comparative efficacy of different eating patterns in the management of uh, diabetes showed that calorie restriction was ranked as one of the best pattern for weight loss and reducing the waist circumference. And similarly, different types of dietary patterns were listed, but somehow they focused in the reduction of only one or two particular components related to the management of diabetes and a holistic uh, uh, advantage of these patterns was not seen. So, like, I'm very happy to share uh, that uh, my PhD student, we are working on one of the doctoral thesis where we want to see the efficacy of two specific uh, meal plans, that is the continuous calorie restricted versus the time restricted intermediate fasting uh, pattern. And it is going to be a randomized crossover clinical trial. Uh, where randomly the participants will be assigned to one of the two dietary interventions with a washout period and then they will be taking the other uh, uh, intervention and we are, the primary objective is to see the efficacy of these diet patterns on the uh, glycemic variability using the continuous uh, uh, glycemic measurement uh, device uh, and I'm very happy to say that we have already registered this uh, trial with the clinical trial registry of India and we have started with the enrollment of the subjects for this uh, uh, study. Also happy to share that we had starlets like Yajnik sir, uh, uh, Sanjay Gandhi sir as the review members and we got very important insights from them to frame a really good uh, protocol looking ahead for some very promising results from uh, this study. And when I talk about that remission of type 2 diabetes is possible, so why we really go for a nutrition therapy? Because our ultimate goal is to manage disease and also to take back these diabetic subjects to lead a normal life. So there is evidence which talks about that remission is possible. This is a very recent study by Sally et al. And we are very fortunate we are going to hear her in the afternoon uh, sessions. She is going to be personally over here. And in this particular paper also, it was seen that there were various types of diet uh, protocols or therapies which were adopted and uh, uh, the ones who were following the low calorie diets and the low carbohydrate diets, uh, they were able to uh, uh, achieve the remission of uh, their di diabetes, although this was in a targeted population in a clinical setting. And there was a constraint uh, that the sustainability of this remission was not very long. Uh, it was only for two years, which calls upon a longitudinal approach or a long-term approach if you really want to uh, achieve this. And so, adherence is the key. Next slide. 
And when we want to, when I say that their uh, long-term approach has to be adopted, adherence is the key. Because you don't want to lose the motivation of the patients or the subjects in between. They have to be a part of that management plan for a long period of time to sustain the results that they are uh, uh, getting. So these particular uh, systematic review uh, conducted in 2020, it talked about adhering to a healthy lifestyle. So. It doesn't only consider the nutrition therapy, but also along with favorable diet, you have physical activity, uh, lifestyle modification in terms of non-smoking, moderate alcohol intake, and achieving normal weight. All of these were associated with a reduced risk of uh, type 2 diabetes and also the mortality cases, the relative mortality which was uh, related to these complications. Another systematic uh, uh, review which was conducted in the low and middle income countries, it was seen that adherence rate for self-care behaviors, they differed for each component of the management strategy. That is diet, medication, uh, exercise, self-monitoring of the blood glucose uh, levels, and also the foot care. And so it is very important that the countries, uh, they monitor the adherence to the individual diabetes care uh, uh, components rather than looking at a very cumulative uh, adherence. Thus, joint adherence to healthy lifestyle along with diet with healthy lifestyle factors is important to prevent and manage type 2 diabetes and improve the survival among the individuals with diabetes. Again, a piece of information, a study coming from SIHS, where I and my PhD student, we uh, tried to understand that what are the adherence and the barriers to the MNT, which is uh, being given uh, to the uh, diabetic patients to control uh, their glycemic profile. And uh, not, not going into the detail, but uh, it was disheartening to see that the adherence level was only 41.6%, even though that each of these subjects were with a registered dietitian, but they adherence was quite low and also like uh, uh, there were improvements in the glycemic profile in the group adhering group uh, towards the MNT uh, advice and the major reasons or the motivating factors that they quoted were to improve the overall health to control their blood sugar levels and the barriers the common barriers which were uh, identified were that there was a lot of monotony or habituality to the food that they were eating every day it does not satisfy their hunger and there was lack of willpower so motivation is very important that these subjects they stick to the advice uh, that have been given to them and that is why it shows that uh, we, we concluded that uh, MNT advice when RD is effective in reducing the barriers and also improves the adherence and gives a good control on the glycemic profile of the subjects. Can you sum up, please? We run out yes, time. yes, Thank sir. You. Just two more minutes. Next slide. So as I told, I, I'm done with my nutrition therapy content, but as I told that you cannot talk about nutrition therapy in isolation. So we have very uh, two more important components which form uh, uh, the core of the management plan. Uh, I, I will not go into the details, but physical activity is something that has to be focused and 150 minutes or, or more of moderate to vigorous physical activity is needed with no more than two consecutive days without an activity. And Prolonged sitting should be interrupted every 30 minutes for the blood glucose benefits. So all of us who have been sitting in this room for a long time now, I think we should move our bodies because uh, more than 30 minutes is going to be harmful for our uh, glycemic profile. And of course, yoga, Surya Namaskar, they have shown beneficial effects. Uh, again, a, meta, a, a systematic review shows that uh, supervised training increases the adherence to all the interventions which involve physical activity uh, as one of the management strategy. So supervision, again, is re-emphasized over here. Similarly, uh, Girja ma'am has already talked about psychosocial health. This is very important because systematic review evidence has shown that the QOL, the quality of life of diabetic patients is found to be lower as compared to the normal population and that is why it should be integrated with a very patient centric approach to optimize the goals of the management for type 2 diabetes. And uh, just happy to share that uh, the SIHS group has also, also conducted one of the studies where we looked at the quality of life among uh, 
people with diabetes, dividing them into two groups based on their duration of diabetes. And uh, the results showed that females had poor uh, quality of life scores in physical functioning domain, emotional well-being domain, and social functioning domain. And thus, this should become one of the important targets in the diabetes management. And I just sum up my uh, presentation that it is possible to live a healthy life even with diabetes if we have the right synchronization between all the components which form the core of a management plan. Thank you.